Hello, my name is Low G, and welcome to another edition of Low G Power Ups. In this power up, we will be playing everyone's favorite sound, minor pentatonic, with a little bit of flat five sprinkled throughout. Let's first listen to what this exercise sounds like. This exercise will be split into parts one, two, three, and then the final part where we play along with a track that gradually increases tempo. Let's get started now with part one. Okay, so this exercise is pretty much entirely in A minor, and this first run is a very, very typical run that you'll see all the time, and maybe you're already playing this sort of thing, and is a three octave run. So all I'm really doing is playing a particular figure starting on this low A, then I'm playing the same exact figure up an octave, and then I'm playing the same exact figure essentially up another octave. So those octaves again, there's the A, the next one is here, and the next one's a little bit further away because of the tuning of the guitar. It's something that I call crossing the border. Um, so the the general pattern is essentially this. I'm playing minor pentatonic, so one right here with my ring finger, flat three on the next string, pointer finger, then the four up there with my ring finger, and then the five. That's the general shape. Now there are some other things going on, but that's the general shape that we're doing. So one, flat three, four, five, and then flat seven on the D string right there, and then we repeat. So one, flat three, four, five, right there, flat seven, slightly different position because of the tuning issue. And then we repeat, one, flat three, four, five. So that's the general shape. So check out what this looks like. Then again, and then again, up to there. Now the, the slightly different things are adding in the flat five, which we'll do, and we're also not starting on the root, we're starting on the flat seven. So the flat seven is right there. If that's one, that's always flat seven. And we're building up from there. So it feels like this, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, and then again, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, then again, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five. So it's good to always know the root whenever you are playing, because you can kind of get your foundation of all the other notes once you know the root. But do keep in mind that this pattern starts on flat seven. It also rhythmically does not start on the downbeat. So you might naturally want to hear one, two, three, four, bam, and start, but that's not what it is. It actually comes in on the end of four. It does not come in on one. So one, two, three, and four, and, and we continue. So you have to keep that in mind. Once we play over the track, you'll feel it, and you'll kind of lock in. So that's the first element starting on the flat seven, and then now we need to sneak in the flat five. So the flat five is where? It's always just a fret behind five, right? You guys are probably already playing that sound. Flat five is an interesting sound because it's actually not in the key, but it's a super common note, and it adds this really nice kind of nasty color to the sound. Now, the way we're using it in this particular run, we're not really featuring the note. We're just kind of using it as a passing tone. So you can always do that. If you're playing four to five, that's four, that's five. You can always play the flat five right in between. And it just acts as a passing note, a little chromatic thing up to the five, right? So that's that's how it's being used in this first particular part. Later on in the, in the other parts, there are some instances where I'm kind of featuring the flat five a little bit more by like jumping right to them. So we'll get to that. But first, let's hear what this general thing sounds like uh, slowly. So again, start on the flat seven, on the end of four, then one, flat three, four, flat five, five, and then we do it again. Flat seven, one, flat three, four, flat five, five, then we do it again. Flat seven, one, flat three, four, flat five, five. Now we're not actually, in this part, we're not playing that five, we're ending here on this flat five to keep it rhythmically kind of making sense with the track. So let me play that one more time, slowly. That's where we're going to end on this flat five up top. So uh, fingering wise, what I'm essentially doing is I'm playing pointer ring on always on the flat seven one. And then for the other notes, I'm just kind of walking up all the fingers. Flat three, four, flat five, five. So flat three with my pointer and then four middle flat five ring pinky with the normal five. And then when I continue to the next octave, it's exactly the same. Pointer ring, same exact fingering. And then with the next octave, I'm doing the same thing. Pointer ring. Same exact finger. Of course, we're not playing that note. We're ending here with this particular part. So that's kind of the shape. 
it's a little tricky because you do have to kind of do some finger gymnastics here when you're changing or changing positions. But once you do it enough, you'll kind of get the flow. So again, notice when I'm playing my pinky, by the way, especially right here, when my pinky is getting ready to play, my pointer finger is already sneaking up to grab that next string. So that's something you might want to try to kind of preemptively get ready for the position change. So again, See, my pinky's being played, my pointer finger sneaking up, getting ready to play that next note. Same thing here. Pinky's playing, and my pointer finger sneaking up to grab that next note. So a little thing you want to keep in mind. Um, in regards to the right hand, I'm not really doing anything really specific, and I don't think you should either, unless, of course, you want to. If you're trying to practice your alternate picking, let's say, then just alternate pick everything. So that would look like this, just down, up, down, up, down, up. You know, pretty simple, just straight up always alternating. This one's actually pretty easy to alternate because every time you start a string, you're starting with a downstroke. And the reason why is because all of the notes on the strings are in even numbers. So it's two notes and then four. So because of that, every time I start the string, it'll always be downstroke. So down, 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 down. If I did like two notes and then three, that would change everything. But because it's two notes and four and everything's even numbers, we're always locking in with the, uh, or the downstrokes. Um, as far as hammer ons and pull offs, you can all also do that. Maybe something like this pick, hammer on, pick, hammer, hammer, hammer. That's fine. Just make sure when you are doing these hammer ons, you're doing them in time. Don't just flop your fingers down. They have to be in time. You know, a big problem when people do hammer ons, they always want to do them too quickly or too fast. So just make sure you're always in time, especially if you're playing on the slow tempos. You can also do a combination. Maybe you can do like pick, hammer. Then I think I'm doing. I think I'm doing something like that. So maybe pick, hammer, pick, 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 hammer. That's kind of a cool one. So something like that you can experiment with. Um, it, it's honestly up to you. I mean, these exercises, you can you can adapt to whatever technique that you're trying to practice. If you want to practice alternate picking, do it straight alternate picking. If you're trying to practice your um, hammer-ons and pull-offs, do that. If Maybe if you want to do like a pick and a finger, so you can do like pick, hammer-on, then finger, hammer, hammer, hammer. That's kind of cool if you want to work on that sort of technique. So again, that's pick, finger. I'm sorry, pick, hammer on, finger, hammer, hammer, hammer. Pick, hammer, finger, hammer, hammer, hammer. Sounds weird when I say hammer, hammer, hammer over, over and over again. Kind of lose my voice when I do it. So something like that you can definitely try. You just have to experiment, figure out what works best for you. Um, as I do this, as you watch me do it, I'm going to be doing a variety of things. I'm going to be doing straight alternate picking sometimes. I'm going to be doing straight hammer-ons and pull-offs uh, other times, and then a mixture. It's kind of depending on what I feel like at the moment. So you don't have to do uh, what I'm doing, of course. You can kind of do whichever technique makes the most sense to you. And just make sure it's comfortable. Make sure you're, you're targeting whatever technique that you, you are currently trying to work on. So again, let me play this one a couple more times so you can see exactly what it is. And then we'll play along with the track. So here's uh, the beginning exercise. Again, starts on the end of four. So one, two, three, and four. Bang. And we're just ending right there today. So I'll do a little slower. And again, it's the same exact thing, just three octaves. There's the first octave, there's the second octave, there's the third, and we're ending there. Of course, the next note in part two is this one, but rhythmically, we just wanna end right there, so. Anyway, I hope this stuff makes sense. Um, this track that we're about to play through is going to move from 60 BPM to 140. So it's not super fast, but again, keep in mind the fingering and the techniques that you're trying to work on and make sure everything is smooth. So let's get to that track.
Okay, that does it for part one. Again, if you guys enjoy this type of instructional material, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below, and I will see you in part two.